Hey, yo, it's Joe, aka Mad Dropsy. I know, I know. Last video, I said that the track Self Love from Across the Spider Verse is probably my favorite track on the album. But. Holy frick frack. The song Calling by Sway Lee and Nav with beats from Metro. This. This song is top tier modern day rap. Me saying that about a modern day rap song is uncommon because I really just ain't a fan of most modern day rap songs from all these younger artists who all have the same type of beats and flow of how they sing lyrics in their songs. As well as mostly using autotune to make themselves sound better. Calling though is freaking incredible and is a gorgeous summarization of Miles and Gwen's developing relationship so far throughout the animated Spider-Verse movies. There are really only two things about this song that are making me hype like this about it and making me replay it over and over. Those two things being one, how beautifully the lyrics chronicle the relationship between Miles and Gwen, and two, is that otherworldly melody from Sway Lee. This melody, dude. This melody is just like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know. Like, it almost feels entrancing in a way. There just isn't any justification for why the melody of a modern day rap song is so phenomenal. I'm still trying to make sense of how it was done so well. I guess I can maybe describe it like, say you have a crush, a significant other, or a partner. You both are head over heels for each other, and it's as if the two of you are in the sky soaring through the clouds while this song is being echoed throughout. That scenario is what I imagined every time I listened to Sway Lee's melody in Calling. I haven't listened to any of Sway Lee's music and honestly don't even know anything about him. All I know of him is that he sang most of the song Sunflower from Into the Spider-Verse, which was also top tier modern day rap music. The way that Sway's voice flows through the lyrics of his verses in Sunflower and calling it just really works for me it definitely does sound like there's autotune mixed in with his voice though so if it is then that's a bit of an l i also really like the lyrics of the melody specifically where it talks about it being my fault for letting you fall for me that is gwen talking about it being her fault for letting miles fall for her by staying around in his universe for longer than necessary and developing a friendship with him the lyrics of Calling really apply only to Gwen, whereas the lyrics of Sunflower mainly apply to Miles. Remember how last video I said that the direction of the tone and lyrics of Gwen's theme song Self Love makes it feel like her own version of Sunflower? Yeah, I was wrong about that and I didn't realize it until I really started listening to Calling on repeat. This literally is Gwen's own version of Sunflower. Literally. Sunflower narrates the beginning and blossoming of their relationship as friends from the headspace of Miles. Listen to the lyrics carefully and it's easy to tell that the relationship is being told from his perspective and how he feels about it. Then listen carefully to the lyrics of Calling and based on Gwen's arc and across the Spider-Verse, it's obvious that the continuing development of their relationship is this time being told from her headspace and how she feels about it. Which leads me into discussing the verse of the song, sung by either Nav or Boogie. I'm genuinely not sure who sung the main verse of the song because I've never listened to any of Nav or Boogie's music and I've literally never even heard of them until listening to this song. If they both had verses within the main section of the song, then I definitely wasn't able to decipher who is who. Which is more reason why I'm not a fan of modern day rappers using the same flows in autotune. Can't even tell two different people apart in a verse unless they're an avid fan of both their music. <laughs> um... Okay, this is a new development for me. 
So literally right now, as I'm in the middle of typing the script for this video, I'm scouring online and stumbled upon an extended version of the song, which clears up all of my confusion regarding Nav and Boogie's verse. Or should I say, verses, since in the extended version of the song, there are two whole verses and man, listening to Boogie's verse for the first time literally almost ruined the song for me. What the frick was that? That was so awful. Oh my God. That was terrible. No, like that was God awful in my opinion. Boogie's whole verse is a perfect example of why I absolutely can't stand modern day rap. It sounded like a discombobulated and distorted mishmash of incomprehensible nothingness. Anyone who genuinely thinks Boogie's verse was any good you were capping, you were capping so hard, my guy. Boogie's verse is a pile of hot garbo, and I stand by that. Good thing I don't have to break down the lyrics of his verse to explain how they fit in with Gwen's perspective of the relationship, because the lyrics in Boogie's verse have no relevance to Miles and Gwen's relationship. No meaning, no depth, no emotional weight. And I remember I was a bit annoyed with the flow of Nav's verse when I first heard it. But she's on a cracker. Boogie's verse is miles worse. All right, let me get on to discussing Nav's verse because holy, I could go on and on for the rest of the video about how putrid Boogie's verse was. In fact, that's just how awful it was. I have never in my life used the word putrid to describe anything. I've heard of the word before, but I've never actually said it. Now, I know I could have cut out the part where I was saying I couldn't tell apart Nav and Boogie in the verse, since that part of the script is no longer necessary to have in the video, due to me discovering they have two whole separate verses. Though, I thought it would be interesting for you to experience in real time a discovery, mistake, or realization I made during the process of making a video and how it changes the video. Also, gotta make sure the video is over at least 8 minutes, right? Nah, I'm only joking about that last part. Now, on to Nav's amazing verse. Unlike Boogie's verse, the lyrics in Nav's verse are so in sync with Gwen's journey throughout the film. There are also literal direct references to events that play out. Like the line about being short on time and never having enough of it, describes each time Gwen crosses into Miles' universe, she isn't there long enough for them to share any meaningful time together. Every time she's been in his universe so far, it's been because of a mission. And the line about falling in love not being the plan when running into you, describes Gwen not originally planning on falling in love with Miles, due to her fear of losing him because of her knowledge that in every universe where Spider-Man has a romantic relationship with Gwen Stacy, it doesn't end well. Especially after having already personally experienced it with the Spider-Man of her universe, she doesn't want to risk being the inadvertent cause of Miles' death. The line about it being hard for her to tell the truth describes Gwen not telling Miles why she really returned to his universe, not filling him in on the ordeal with Spot, as well as not telling him that her primary reasoning for returning there is because since she had the watch, which allowed her to do so, she couldn't pass on the chance to go there real quick just to check on him and see how he's doing. That's so sweet and wholesome. The line about going through any obstacle to get to you pretty much correlates with the watch Miguel gave her, allowing her to travel through universes. She would literally travel through universes to get to Miles. Again, very sweet and shows how much she already cares about Miles. I'm not materialistic, but I got a thing for you. Treat the world like my guitar, I'm pulling strings for you. That final line right there, man. That was freaking it, my guy. It's excellent. The lyrics correlating to how Gwen feels about Miles, the tone and flow of Nav's voice when singing it, it was flawless. I wasn't really a fan of Nav's verse at first, and it's because it has that same sounding tone and flow that every modern day rapper has. Though, after listening to his verse a few more times, it really grew hard on me. Hold up. Pause. 
is mainly because of the actual lyrics having meaning and narrating Gwen's thoughts about the relationship, but for modern day rappers that use that same tone and flow when singing, Nav did do well at making it sound pretty decent and tolerable. Calling is a beautiful rap song, chronicling the continuing journey of Miles and Gwen's relationship through Gwen's perspective. Wow, never thought I'd ever call a rap song beautiful, but I suppose there's a first time for everything. Sway Lee and Nav did an A1 job singing their parts, accompanied by a very warm and comforting beat by Metro. As for Boogie's verse, what verse? Since when did Boogie have a verse in the song? As far as I'm aware, there's only one verse in the song, and it's sung by Nav. I I'm not sure what's like, I, I have no idea about... Who Who is this Boogie? The only Boogie I know of is the Boogeyman, though I usually try to steer clear of him. Like I said in the last video, I'm not a fan of most of the music from the album, but Calling? It's freaking top tier modern day rap music. I can admit when something I generally don't like takes me by surprise and is good for once. And I have no problem admitting that this song is solid. I definitely like Calling a bit more than Self Love, and I think it is now my favorite song from the album. I mean, it's easily in the top three for sure, and I don't really think any other song on the album comes close to um, hold up. Wait, what the? Yo. Oh my god. I hope you enjoyed watching and post in the comments any questions or thoughts you have about what I said in the video. And also post your thoughts about the song Calling. I'd like to see what you say. Alright, that's it. Good times and positive vibes everyone. Stay humble, stay grateful.